Hey everyone, this is Rob. Hey, I'm Michelle. And welcome to Boon Bape, your weekly podcast and everything you need to know about old school RuneScape. All right, so this week up on the Heart Locket, we have our <laughs> account <laughs> and personal progress and updates. So we'll be going over all of that, including uh, anything we have coming up. And then we will be going over, unfortunately, sadly, to say goodbye, the closing of Leagues. That Leagues ended like a month ago when I stopped. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of how everyone thinks about it. But no, <laughs> it is officially ending today. It's already over. So <laughs> there's uh, uh, everything I want to tell you has already done. But I will still tell you about it. Okay. <laughs> and then we are going to talk about a little bit of a project that Jagex has come out with that's in beta currently that could potentially have some really interesting implications for the game. So oh. I'll be going over that. And then we have the PvP Arena update for this week that actually came out. Still not a ton of notes to go on this week. Not a ton happened, but... We'll be covering them regardless and finishing off as always with a Q&A. And I think it'd be cool again to throw in some questions that I thought were really good from the Q&A podcast that they had on the OSRS um, actual Twitch account. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Before we get into all this, Michelle, how's it going? Pretty well, I would say. Oh, yeah? Tell me yeah. about it. So a uh, random new goal I had that I reached was to get 750 Slayer tasks done nice you got it do that yeah cool. still no skatizo helm i'm at 33 kills now which is a bummer but uh to celebrate getting my 750th task because i got like several hundred points i had over 5,000. i celebrated by buying the twisted horns and i now have the twisted slayer helm oh that's cool yeah also i well that's what i was going to talk about we Perfect are dog timing. sitting a french bulldog right now everyone and that's just how he breathes yeah if you so. hear any <laughs> snorting random things that Snoring, might weird, sound like growling it's probably breathing. just him breathing because yeah, it is really poor, uh, little, poor little snouts yeah his his breathing just isn't the best but if you hear any weird <laughs> sounds that's probably what it is it is not us just like snoring in the background just, just snorting while you're talking about random somebody stuff. last night came onto the stream and they're like i hear snoring and i was like it's a dog it is not a person <laughs> it is not us I guess fortunately. That was great timing though. As soon as I was gonna give a heads up, he's like <laughs> Yeah, he just he just took a deep breath on his way to like sit down for a few and just makes really loud noises. He's just a loud little dog. But yeah, uh we are dog sitting, so keep that in mind. <laughs> because it was distracting me while I was even saying updates. Yeah. But yeah, I wasn't able to get the Skatizo home helm yet. I really hope I get it soon. I'm now eight kills dry, which is unfortunate. But I'm still holding out hope, you know. I'm still doing Slayer. I got yeah, my Slayer to 95. You're still pretty low, um, like overall kill count, so it's not too bad. Feels pretty bad. But my Slayer's 95, so I can do Hydra now, but I haven't gotten assigned it yet. And I'm still obviously focusing on Kryn, so I'm not like really worried about that. Yeah. Just trying to. That's still that's still a really Kryn. big um, upgrade, though. Oh, I yeah. mean, Hydra is, I I think. I think definitely like the one of the best money makers in the game. That's what everyone was saying. They were like talking about the money's just gonna roll in now, yeah. and I was like, no, because I'm staying in Corinth. Like as, <laughs> as far as like bossing goes, I think it's like just straight up one of the best ways to make money in the game. Probably yeah. the best bossing money maker in the game. I'm not entirely sure because I, you know, I haven't been there yet, but I'm yeah, you need I'm very fairly confident in saying that even though I've never been there. It's kind of crazy, though, because, well, I got my attack up also to 94, but uh, I didn't realize my Slayer is higher than my attack and defense. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Because it doesn't feel I like I spent that much time for, Slayer. I don't think that happens for a lot of people. No, yeah, it's weird. Well, my range got to 99. My mage is at 97. Strength is at 96. I mostly use a whip for everything, so it's shared XP. I don't level up frequently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so that's... That's cool in a not cool way that I didn't get it yet. <laughs> I mean, it's cool that you got 95. That's It's that's cool that I got 95, deal. yes. I think even if I got assigned a Hydra task, I honestly would probably just do the regular Hydras and not the boss. Oh, yeah? Maybe I'd try the boss a couple of times, but I'm like, I'm really serious about the Skatizo thing. Like, I, I want to just hurry and keep getting task and current. Yeah. It is my main focus. Oh, well, I mean, that's that's pretty cool, though. Yeah. You're getting pretty close. Yeah, and every time I get an Abbey Demon task, I'm hoping that I'm going to get the uh, Abyssal Head, which is like a 1 out of 6,000 drop from them. But, but you're telling me there's a chance. Ninja got two. Really? <laughs> yeah. 
I think I think That's there's really only four six thousand too. Yeah, there's a couple people on stream who have gone multiple, and I'm like, okay, well maybe that will be me, and then I'll only be here for Skatizo. Yeah, maybe. I'm acting like I'm gonna finish Skatizo once I get the helm. I'm still gonna keep going for the pet. Yeah, you're definitely gonna keep going. So. Yeah, the pet. I'm already halfway to the pet drop rate, so I can't not try. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I've been preparing some videos, which none of them have been edited yet. But I started doing like some quest guides, so I think I mentioned it last week. But now I'm actually working on it. I'm starting to do like an Iron Man optimal quest guide video series. Yeah. Just using like the wiki optimal quest guide and going from there. Yeah. So that's. Cool. I think that's a pretty good idea, just because I mean, not only would it be helpful because I don't think anything like that really exists right now, but mm -hmm. also we are, we actually play like multiple Iron accounts and stuff like that, so. I think it's kind of just like a really easy thing to do anyways and it will actually help us because we're going to be figuring out the quests while we go along. So exactly. I think it's a good idea to help other people in the same situation. I'm a little regretful of that on my GIM. I focus so heavily on quests because now I'm like, darn, I had to make a fake account to start these beginner quests and then I'm going to go back to my GIM once I'm caught up. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of just like on a burner account right now, basically. You which didn't is look into the future and realize that you're going to do this in just a few months. I wish I had. <laughs> but yeah, there's no way I'm going to train up this fake account. Well, not really fake, but like this low-key useless account any higher than I need to. Yeah. So I'm not going to quest on there until I'm caught up on my GIM at least. I mean, obviously I've been playing my GIM, but yeah. Yeah. Um, well, luckily, um, a lot of the like early game quests are like really, really easy. So there, yeah. you don't have to grind like practically at all. The only hard thing for me is trying to write like what to say. I, I always like write like what to say the entire time I'm talking and then I always just wing it but I need to have notes yeah because otherwise I like lose track of what I'm saying so I'm trying to write for Miss Lynn Mystery right now and that's kind of like longer than you'd think when you're taking notes for it <laughs> uh yeah because I mean there's like a lot of <laughs> that's stuff the to actually one that's like do. scream yeah because there's like a bunch of like little rooms that you have to figure out and stuff like that so. yeah and I am trying to still keep the plot in it to let you guys know like what's happening <laughs> yeah so while that one is like really easy there's like a ton of like smaller steps so for sure so yeah working on that currently uh we also have been slacking on our one of our secret collaboration things so we've both been working on that the past few days yeah and yeah i'm like what else what else have i been doing <laughs> is that it i mean that's a pretty big like series of goals i mean you did it 75 slayer which is one of the slowest skills in the 95 game slayer. 95 <laughs> 75 95 same thing it's just a little bit of a difference. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. And I did technically make videos. They just haven't been posted. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's mostly. I've also been playing some Phasmo. And last night I was doing some on stream. And I thought it was pretty funny. So maybe we'll put that one on YouTube. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. I got dared by someone in chat. I have a truth or dare thing on Twitch, which uh, is a couple thousand coins. And they dared me to use the curse object to trigger a hunt in Phasmo without telling anyone. Which basically means... I poked a voodoo doll in the heart and it immediately killed one of my teammates who wasn't expecting it. <laughs> yeah. So that was funny. And then, yeah, it was it was funny. I enjoyed it. Maybe that'll go on there. But, uh, yes, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I've been playing a lot more RuneScape lately and mm -hmm. just games in general. I've actually been doing just a lot of stuff in in general, I guess, in like compared life. to yeah, what I've been doing recently. Um, but yeah, I've been playing a lot of RuneScape. I actually was able to do uh, a bunch of Vorkath. I've done a few hours of Vorkath. I've done uh, a little bit of the Mole. Actually, I went back and visited the Giant Mole. Love the Mole. Yeah, so um, I just like thought I would do some more like loot from videos from a few of these bosses. That'd be nice. And on top of that, I actually did a little test between... Um, because for the Vorkath guy that I'm making, I was going to do it with like a cheaper budget and a more expensive budget. Yes. And so I did some testing between the cheap one and the more expensive one. Obviously, the more expensive one gets you like nearly twice as much. But um, <laughs> what's nice is the cheaper budget, if you are on a real budget and you want to go kill Vorkath, it costs less than a million gold. So it's That's pretty great. easy startup. You for... can just go to the giant mole for a little bit first to get that money. Yeah, you could do practically anything for a couple hours and you'll get like a million gold. So that's it's really nice that if you wanted to get into bossing 
you would just have to have like DS2 done and you're pretty much like good to go. On Which one is of the quite bus. a requirement to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But it's it's nice to know that I guess you you could get started pretty early on if you wanted to. Definitely. When do you think that video will be ready? Uh, pretty soon. I just had to get uh, most of that stuff done. I was planning on having it done last week, but um, I wanted to make it like a little bit more thorough. So I did that and it's going to include some like tips and stuff like that. I came in this for... morning and was like, I was doing some math. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to like go through and figure out exactly how many kills uh, on average you'll get per hour and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just so people know what to expect. So it should be a very well detailed video, apparently. Yeah, it, it's not going to be like super detailed. Like I didn't like do any studies or anything on like <laughs> the best. Uh, I've been studying it for five years. Yeah, you know, like the best way to fight Borgath or anything like that. This so. is what you're going to write your thesis about. Uh, yeah, this is actually my <laughs> like my, my dissertation answer. is just this Vorkath guide. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's yeah, it should be a pretty pretty decent guide for anyone that hasn't done Vorkath or just wants to go back after a long time and doesn't really remember what to do or maybe you got yeah, hacked or something <laughs> yeah i don't know but that'll be cool and then besides runescape i've been playing a few other games with uh friends i'm actually playing one right now this is a game that i started with my friends the other day and it's in early it's in early access right now it's funny because it's very similar to like valheim okay except for lower and, quality it looks like well no not not in like really the way it plays exactly mm -hmm. but like how it just was a really well done cheap game that like came out from like an indie developer and is in early access and it's like just like really good for what it is because it's only 13 dollars and it's called core keeper oh cool and so i guess the idea is like you're in like I don't know about like the core of the earth, but like in like deep underground. And so you have to like fight these bosses and there's like, it's nice because there's fighting, there's mining, there's gardening, there's building of like structures and stuff like that. That's very cool. There's uh, like boss fighting. And also there's like an entire like skill system and like talent points and stuff like that. So it's a lot deeper than you would think. So um, I just been playing that with a few friends and that's, uh, going pretty well i think i might even make a video of it because it's a it's a pretty cool game you should. and i think it deserves like a shout out yeah it deserves a, as much attention as it's getting it's getting a lot of attention don't get me wrong there's i think it's sold like over two hundred thousand games in the first week that it's been out so that's what makes it similar to valheim because i think valheim went crazy it sold like a million copies in two weeks and as yeah. an indie developer that's just unheard of <laughs> so it's you really should nice. make some more videos of them. Yeah, we keep talking about the videos we're going to make, but we both kind of like... Are lazy. They, yeah, they're not published yet. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully we can get some new ones coming out soon. Yeah, that's I pretty really cool. I really hope so. Oh, yeah. So I guess um, if anyone has like 15 bucks and wants to like... Like if you enjoy games like Minecraft, Terraria, I guess kind of like Valheim, like games where there's like some combat and some like crafting, some creation a little bit of survival aspects then this might be right up your alley it's pixel it's like like pixel style so yeah that's why i was saying lower quality than valheim yeah it's not it as detailed it but it's still a, is pretty exactly yeah so it's like very stylized it's not gonna have a huge um like demand on your computer so if you're worried about that then it should be fine mm -hmm. and it's on steam it's called core keeper i'd recommend checking it out yeah shout out core keeper yeah but besides that uh i really haven't been doing anything else i have been playing a little bit of another uh random indie game called um uh deep deep rock galactic it's a pretty fun oh, yeah. game you where mentioned you're that one before, eh? yeah so most people have seen the movie starship troopers it's a movie where you just are it's <laughs> it's actually a really old movie have you seen that i haven't seen it now you have it i've heard uh, of it and i yeah, know it's, some it's of a it. really old movie but uh, it's a set of movies where essentially people go to these other planets and it's like armies and armies of like humans and they fight like bugs like giant bugs oh yeah i didn't know that's what was happening yeah you fight like giant bugs with like machine guns and like rockets and stuff naturally and there's like different like kinds of bugs and stuff like that it's really similar to that but like you go in as four dwarves and you go and like mine their resources and leave and the whole time these bugs are trying to kill you how interesting <laughs> yeah it's, it's actually a really cool game that game is really fun as well and that's it's so cheap funny. so that's another fun one that i've been playing with my friends so how much is that one um, I think that was only like 20 bucks as well. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, what's nice is like 
it's it's nice that you it's like more common it's still uncommon but it's more common nowadays to come across like these really cheap well done made like indie games mm -hmm. that you can like hop on and play with friends and um it's really cool because even that one um deep rock is like multiplayer and that like you can just join other people's games from anywhere so you can well, pretty that's easily like phasmo yeah exactly you can e pretty easily group up with like anyone um that just is playing the game so. would also recommend phasmophobia it's only like 14 dollars, and i will play with you if you hit me up <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I think that's enough shouting out of uh, other companies. Every game ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, one more shout out though. Hello Fresh ends in five days, everyone. Oh yeah, Hello Fresh. <laughs> Actually, four days now. So if you want to order, order as soon as you can. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you can get four meals for five dollars a piece. Is their cheapest plan, and they're actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's, the whole deal is 16 free meals over six weeks. Yep. And three surprises, whatever that means. Three surprises. Yes. We we just did it for one week because we're still broke. But uh, it was pretty dink food. It was, yeah. It was pretty good. Yeah. Would recommend. And it's a way to support us if you want to actually get something other than emotes out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that'll be over on our Twitch and like our link tree on every social media if you want to do it. Yeah. But besides that, um, on OSRS, I've really just been bossing. I think I've made around, um, I even did some uh, vampires for a little bit. Some vamp or oh, Firewatch. Firewatch Sentinels. So, yeah, just besides that, I think I made around, I think it was like 7 to 10 mil just in like the last, I haven't really been played that much. Like, that sounds like it's not much because. I thought it sounded like a lot because I've been making less. Oh, I was going to say because it's not, I haven't been playing a ton. I think that's just from like three or four hours of everything combined mm -hmm. where i mean that could really just be a couple hours at vorkath if that's all i was actually doing vorkath's wild dude yeah but um yeah so that's was pretty cool i was really just playing a little bit of osrs and i'm still really enjoying vorkath even after nearly 1500 kc so i'm glad uh, i'm just gonna keep doing that for a little bit and i should have a video of um vorkath coming out soon and maybe even mole and maybe some other bosses that I need to get around to. I didn't do a mole like guide or anything. I just did 100 kills. Yeah. So you could always expand on my video. Yeah, I could. But um, I think that's about it for me. Do you have any other updates? Nope. I just, now that we're talking about it, I'm like, oh, man, I want to go work on videos now. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. All right. Um, But we can, I guess, jump in to the Shattered Relics because um, that's pretty cool. I guess that it's, it's done, coming though. to an end. So Wait, is it done yet? Yeah. Okay. So um, they have an entire blog on this on the OSRS website. Of course, as always, the links down below if you are on uh, YouTube or just head over to the OSRS news section. And for the League's three Shattered Relics closing plans, it says, uh, gather around Fragment Hunters after a thrilling couple of months. League's three Shattered Relics is coming to an end. It's been tremendous fun watching you experiment with this all new approach to the League's experience, where the previous two incarnations were all about making fixed choices in restricted locations. Our third outing gave you new ways to adapt and enhance your powers and with access to the whole world map. This resulted in all sorts of possibilities for play, just like we hoped it would. Watching you all fusing fragments and switching up your powers had certainly been inspirational for the team as your thoughts turn to Leagues 4. Hell so, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I know, they're already, they're already talking about Leagues 4. That's hilarious. Ready. Uh, it says, in the meantime, though, let's focus on the most pertinent question. How will Leagues 3 end? So it says, first off, you'll be happy to hear all the Leagues worlds will be open until the usual game update at 1130 GMT. Is on like Wednesday. 3 a.m. here? Yeah, it's, it's way <laughs> over. On Wednesday, March 16th, which is today when we're recording this, um, this means you'll have a chance to complete your last few tasks and scoop up some extra points before the regular game update. I'm just realizing, I was like, oh, this is so late notice. This uh, is from March 11th. Yeah, this came out five <laughs> days ago. This came out like two days after the podcast was recorded last week. Yeah. So it says downtime will be minimal and uh, comparable to that of a regular game update. Once the game has been updated, all League's worlds will be inaccessible. What will remain, however, is the all-important reward shop. Your League's points will transfer over to the main game, ready to be spent on goodies including the Shattered Relics Hunter Outfit, Home Teleport, Ornament Kits, and more. Woo! Yeah, exactly. After all that hard work, you're probably keen to get a hold of your trophies. These will be, won't be available straight away. 
as we'll make sure to correctly identify the thresholds for the different ranks. We're aiming to make them available around 1200 GMT, which should already have happened. Yeah, I was like, spoiler alert, they're already out. Yeah. Uh, finally, we just like last year, we want to run a little end of leagues event to say goodbye. This has also already happened, but they're <laughs> running a little bit of an event at 1100 GMT on World 500 where they ran from uh, the spawn in Catherby all the way down to the fight arena uh, just near Port Kazard. All this stuff was happening in the middle of the night here when we were asleep. Yeah, literally. <laughs> And they want to thank everyone for your time you've spent in this league. The radical reimagining has really paid off thanks to your creativity and general balance or brilliance as players. Here's to the next one because who knows? Some of these characters may already be itching to make their return. Ooh. All right. So, what's leagues for? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what did you think of leagues overall? I liked it, but uh, I did get tired of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's bound to happen, right? Yeah. It wasn't even... Initially, I wasn't even tired of it, remember? I just stopped because I got distracted by the Slayer Helm thing and then trying to go back to it. I was like, all right, I don't have the patience right now to be grinding things. I liked it in the beginning because it's so easy to get all the points ever. Yeah. Then it got a little hard. But overall, I really enjoyed it. I love the rewards. I haven't gone to buy them yet because I'm still not totally sure I'm going to spend them on. Yeah. Definitely going to get the cannon and the whip. And see what I can afford after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. But yeah, I I liked it. I hope that next year, I'd love to see them do stuff more like Corinne themed, I guess. Because, you know, like, everyone knows I think Arcadia Sire is like one of the prettiest places in the game. Yeah. I'm like, I want like those colors, like the purple crystals and stuff on everything. Like, oh, that'd be kind of so cool. But yeah, what did you think of it? Yeah, overall, I was uh, kind of in the same boat. I thought it was really cool. And I was kind of conflicted, though, because I thought the rewards were definitely some of the best, if not just straight up the best. Mm -hmm. I think uh, probably the next closest for me was Twisted League, which had some really cool uh, rewards. Uh, obviously, I didn't play in Twisted League. I oh, just got a whip. Geez, just got a whip. <laughs> I'm at um, an Abyssal Demon Slayer task. I'm literally just hitting them with arc light because I'm not really paying attention. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, I didn't really play in the last leagues. Um, I think I might have popped in on the last one, which is uh, Path or Pathfinder or um, I thought it was uh, Trailblazer. Was oh, Trailblazer was last year. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of popped in on that one. I didn't really play Twisted. I think the rewards from Twisted were cool. Maybe even I don't know on par or cooler than this one. I didn't know until this week looking at the Twisted Slayer Helm that there was like like a Twisted Dragon Axe and stuff like that. There's a lot of tools. It, they're actually really oh, cool looking. I, yeah, I was looking them up and I was like, these are nice. They're oh, like ornament cool. kits to go on them. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're really cool looking. Yeah, um, but besides that, like, I think the rewards this time around were really cool, really uh, up my alley with like the glowing effects and stuff like that. And they were for really popular items that I thought were, I mean, that I used. So that was really cool. Yeah. But um, I did have some problems with the league and I think. This is something a lot of people felt. And also, I just remembered um, uh, Jimmy actually even made a video about this where it felt like there was like too much to do this league. Maybe that's why I got kind of overwhelmed. Yeah, I think it was like a very easy league to get burnt out on, especially with one, how long it was and two, just strictly like how much there was to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there was just like a massive like seemingly unending list of stuff to do whenever you first got into the game. Yeah, it was really hard at first actually being like, what do I even prioritize? Yeah, even hundreds of hours into the journey, it was very easy to just still be like overwhelmed with how much stuff there was to do on your account. I mean, that's why in all your videos you were like, I'm changing my goals now. <laughs> yeah, that's why that's the one thing I, I really didn't like about it is that's what was different. They they marketed it as like good for this league. And I guess it was because mm -hmm. if you enjoyed certain areas that, that were previously locked off, then you had access to that this time around. But I think I kind of liked it previously where you could only have certain areas available to you. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, though, neither of us really got to bossing or anything this league. So. No, yeah, certainly. But I think that would have been like maybe better overall. And I think... Um, Honestly, if you feel the same, maybe just go watch Jimmy's video. I think he has some really good points about why he thought like this was probably not the best league mm -hmm. and um, how they can like probably improve on it next time around. Yeah. So overall, I thought it was a pretty nice league and it was 
really nice for especially being my first foray into actual leagues. Yeah, I know last time I played for like two hours. I think you did something similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just like hopped in to check it out and I was like, oh, cool, this stuff exists. And uh, at that and time, goodbye. I think I was only around like between 15 or 1600 total on my main. So I mm-hmm. still had a lot of stuff that I wanted to do. Oh, yeah. So I kind of didn't really take leaks seriously back then. I did also look it up because I was saying there was a twisted dragon axe. I was confused. It was a trailblazer. But they're oh, actually okay, okay. so cool looking. Yeah. They're like more beige with blue and there's like a dragon axe, dragon harpoon, dragon pickaxe, and then the same for infernal. I I didn't know what the rewards were last year, but oh, cool. I stumbled upon those the other day and I quite liked them. Yeah. I wasn't really a big fan of the aesthetic of trailblazer overall. I wasn't in general, but I like how these look. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. But um, yeah, I guess that is bidding adieu to leagues for this time around and I mean, they're already talking about Leagues 4, but if anything, I don't think we'll see it until later next year, if I had really? to guess. Really? You think so? Um, I think that I thought they always do it around the beginning of the year. Well, yeah. Actually, they were going to do it at the end of last year, huh? Yeah, exactly. So that's what I mean. That's hard to tell. I think just with naturally with delays and stuff like that, we probably, I mean, if I had to guess, the end of next year. Okay. If if anything, the the middle but yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be some time until that comes out. Do a Korean theme. Yeah, that'd be cool to do like a, a Korean theme. Is that the theme you'd want to see next? That or Mauritania because maybe it's just because I have the uh, HD on, but Mauritania and Korean are like the prettiest places in the world now. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I could see that. I think it'd be cool to do. I don't know how they would do it because there's not really like one specific area for this, but I think it'd be really cool to be like dragon themed or something like that. Ooh. Um, yeah, that'd be really cool to see them work around that. That'd be so cool. That'd be cool to get like a new Dragon Slayer home, like a different one. Uh, I don't know how they would do it. I'm not very creative. Yeah, maybe they, they could like jazz up some of the dragon skins that are already in the game. Yeah. But uh, moving on to the next thing, this is the thing I was kind of being a little secretive about, and that's the Jagex Launcher Open Beta. So this is actually really interesting. They came out with this blog a couple days ago. And for anyone that doesn't know what this might entail, Essentially, it's going to be its very own launcher. And so if you've ever played any other games, specifically like World of Warcraft or Diablo, they have the Blizzard launcher where it just pops up and it has all the news about the game. The game actually launches from the launcher. That's why it's called that. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and any updates will be done through the launcher itself. And you won't really have the old school um I mean, I mean, they might keep it, but um, I guess the idea would be that you have you don't have the old school launcher or the rune sc- rune light launcher. It all just comes from this one uh, new program. That's interesting. Yeah, so it, it seems pretty uh, standard and par for the course. I mean, a lot of games have their own launchers now. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it, like all the games on Steam have their own launcher. That's the Steam oh, launcher. Yeah. Um, like I said, Blizzard has their own. If you play games like any of the Nexon games, like Maple Story or Vindictus, all of those games have their own launcher. And it's a pretty standard thing. Epic Games has their own launcher. So Fortnite. So everyone but us. Yeah. A lot of games have their own launcher. This is a pretty common thing, which is funny because usually, uh, like in the past when there wasn't all these launchers, it kind of had a purpose where like, oh, you'd keep all your games on this one launcher. But now we have like... 10 different launchers and so you almost have as many launchers as you do games you play wait so. why does that remind me of like streaming services where they're like yeah nah, exactly. you don't have to have cable you could just use netflix and now there's yeah. like a million streaming services yeah everyone's like oh we have netflix and hulu and, and Paramount. stars and hbo it's like it's just now it's just cable again yeah exactly so that's <laughs> kind of like that. what launchers has turned into but they are launching their own jagex that is and it's in open beta so you can try it out yourself What's pretty exciting about this is they are planning on adding Runelight to it as well. I like that. So it says that the launcher offers big improvements to the login experience, chief among them being that it remembers your account. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Provided you log in at least once every 30 days, the launcher will retain your details, making venturing into old school easier than ever. Does that mean you don't have to log in every time? Yeah, you just like hit the play button and it just like automatically puts you in the game. Wait, what? Yeah. So it seems Is this their account cool. security thing? They're like, we can't get capital layers in your password, but we can just keep you logged in so you don't have to think about it. Yeah, one thing <laughs> that I'm hoping is this would improve account security. And also because this is um, a Jagex launcher, I'm suspecting, and even from the picture they have, that they would have RuneScape and 
RS3, so that have old school and RS3 on the same launcher, so you can easily flip flop from one to the other. Because I know a lot of oh, people yeah. play both, so you can easily do that from this new launcher. Oh, that sounds cool. I didn't really understand what would be cool about, but that's nice. Yeah, that is nice. Are you having a login. <laughs> Yeah, so you can have all uh, both games in one place. Cool. It says the launcher also keeps you up to date with links to the latest news. Like I was saying, they'll have like a little scroll panel across with all the newest updates and stuff for the specific game you are hovering over. And it says for current players, the launchers will locate and boot your existing installation. However, if you've been away for a while, it can easily install the game for you as well. So you don't have to like... Th this is also like added security. It's really nice because it'll just go and actually fetch the um, download from the official downloader. You don't have to go to any websites. You just download. It the... can be nerve wracking trying to go to the official website and being yeah. like, I need to make sure it's spelled correctly. Yeah. So you can go to the launcher itself, install the game, and it will find and download the correct version of the game for you. It's awesome. And they also say that this is just the beginning. Lots of additional features are on the way, starting with the ability to install and launch RuneLight. So like I was saying, this is a really nice security feature. And like I said, it's all going to be in one place. So for whatever reason, you feel like just maybe they have something really catastrophic or catastrophic happen at RuneLight and you can't log in with their login, then you can use the old login using this same um, launcher here. Cool. So that would be pretty cool. And then, of course, you're downloading the correct version, and this would reduce the likelihood of players being accidentally fished when <laughs> when searching for RuneLight. Yeah. It also provides a convenient way to easily switch between RuneLight and the official game client. So everything I just said there. Perfect. Uh, everything that you were like, I think this means, they're like, confirmed. Yes, it means this. Yeah, there you go. It's almost like I read this before. Mind freak. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. They have a link for the Jagex official launcher. All you have to do is they actually have a full installation guide. So you just have to simply go there, download it, log in, find the system requirements and start using the launcher and you'll be pretty much good to go. Have you started using it yet or are you going to wait till it's open open? I have not because they haven't added room light to it yet. Oh, so there's not really point for yeah. either of us too. So once they do, then I will seriously consider it. What's really nice about this is this potentially could be a really nice added security bonus because... I'm guessing that maybe there's like no way or a very difficult way to implement additional security on top of whatever they have going on the the like the client base rune light or RuneScape client that just makes it so they're incapable of adding tons of security because that kind of seems how it is. <laughs> it must but, be uh, that, right? <laughs> I'm hoping that's what it is. <laughs> Not just them ignoring it. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping that you having to log in to this client will or this uh launcher for the client will add like a a few layers of security which i think would be a really big boost so, to the security oh yeah so that'd be a really nice update and like kind of a move into the i was gonna say the 21st century but honestly this is like really old technology it's like at this 1700s point. yeah um <laughs> hopefully that works out and we're able to all start using this eventually soon because i think it looks good it looks clean and it's pretty modern as far as i like the idea of it yeah as far as like a lot of other stuff uh, games go but that is that moving into the actual update for this week we have the pvp arena update Woo! so this is the pvp arena rewards beta and this is something we've actually already gone over before but this is actually in the game now so of course we all said <laughs> goodbye <laughs> yeah exactly to the old pvp arena uh the dual arena we don't and say that name anymore. <laughs> we don't speak its name. So this has been the replacement. And so no more gambling at the Sand Casino. This is the new and improved thing that's going to be in the exact same spot. So the Amir of Alcrid has discovered illicit activities taking place in the glorious old battlegrounds, <laughs> formerly known as the Duel Arena. <laughs> as a result, all fights are now overseen by the guards of Alcrid. With this change comes some shiny new rewards. So this is something we've already covered in previous podcasts, but they have essentially elected to remove the old sand casino and replace it with more official dueling and tournaments with, um, I don't even, there, there's actually no monetary rewards anymore instead of the old unlimited or 10 million once they capped it, um, cash rewards. Mm -hmm. So now you can actually duel for just clout or for, um, actual bonuses and stuff that they can uh, provide and give you as actual rewards instead of just yeah. money. 
So this is the beta for it. So you can officially try it out and check it out. See if you enjoy it at all. I know a ton of people are going to be mad about this because there isn't money uh, really in it. Not nearly as much as before. <laughs> but if you enjoy PvPing just for the fun of it, then you can actually check this out on all the beta worlds. It's going to be 401, 405, 407, 409, and 412 for each of the respective regions. Perfect. Yeah, it's pretty cool because you can, uh, because it is a beta world, they'll give you a setup with high stats. Most of the quests are going to be complete. You'll be in Ferox Enclave near a loadout table that'll give you a few different options. You can either select a few different presets of gear and you can also customize your own stats. So if you want to check out what it would be like as a peer, then you can do that as well. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really nice. On top of that, they're also going to give you access to an altar that's right nearby so you can change to whatever spellbook you feel like trying out. That's mega convenient. Yeah. Overall, it seems like a pretty good setup if you are keen on trying this out and testing it out maybe with some friends or just going and seeing how legit the tournament system is. Yeah, it sounds really easy. Along with the plethora of standard gear to choose from, you'll also have access to the rewards from the PvP arena. You'll notice that they look a bit funny. At the stage of development, we're using placeholder graphics. Recycled <laughs> models with a quick paint job to distinguish them from other items. Don't worry, we don't intend to ship them like this. Further down, you can see some concept art of how they'll actually look. So if anyone's never been on the beta worlds, usually the brand new items, they'll just paint completely pink. So, um, I think that some of these are yellow then, because I actually saw it. We follow the OSRS wiki on Twitter, and they tweeted earlier today saying, With the Arena Rewards Beta Live, a new item, Hardened Wristbands of the Arena Broken, has taken the title of longest item name at 41 characters. Oh my gosh. So, the previous record holder at 40 characters was Trailblazer Relic Hunter T1 Armor Set, who held the title for 434 days. <laughs> That's such a weird thing to even tweet out. I retweeted it because I was like, wow history yeah we're making history they, they usually paint them all one solid color so they definitely won't be going out like that it's kind of <laughs> funny they do have some pictures if you want to check them out on the actual update yeah but as far as the rewards we already went over this i think in previous ones but we will quickly take a look at them real quick so they're going to have the new blighted sacks for a small number of reward points from the dual arena itself you'll be able to purchase two new blight sacks that can be used within the wilderness one supplies the runes, the runes required for any wave spell, and another supplies the runes for any surge spell. That's insane. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Obviously, Fire Surge or Flame Surge, a very, very strong spell that is used pretty often. Uh, the sacks are untradeable, and the following behaviors apply should you die with one of them in your inventory. Non-PVP death above 20 wilderness. It'll be sent to your gravestone. And in a PvP death below 20 wilderness, any unprotected blight sacks are destroyed and converted into coins. So that's pretty cool. They also added imbue scrolls. Hmm. So this will allow you to imbue any of the standard items that you can normally imbue, including wristbands of the arena. That's nice. Yeah, so... Uh, Nightmare Zone that. takes forever. I had to imbue my uh, new Slayer Helm the other day, and I was in the Nightmare Zone for like five hours. Yeah, especially because this is really aimed at PvPers, which may or may not have done a good amount of quests so yeah they don't want to go the nightmare even zone. <laughs> slower for them and so they can easily just get it imbued by doing some pvp a quick note is all of the rewards from this point on in the blog act the same way if you die with them in pvp they transform into a broken version and money is dropped to the player killer you must then take them to Purdue to be repaired. They will be broken when purchased, meaning you have to pay Purdue to repair them before they can be used in PvP. You can also use a Trooper Parchment on them, so if you enjoy that, you can do that as well. Cool. But they do have some uh, little sketches of what the wristbands of the arena look like. It looks like you're just wearing a terracotta pot on your hand. Yeah, it kind of just looks like a little ombre effect going on. <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty funny. Very quick drawing. Yeah. Uh, it says, do you hate having a complete, complete quest before your cat's ready to step foot in the wilderness and fight another player? <laughs> well, shame on you because quests are great. But sure. Wait, does it really say that? Yeah, yes, it, really it does. But sure, for those of you whose space bars really cannot take the stress, we've got you covered. <laughs> wristbands of the arena are an untradeable alternative to Barrel's Gloves, offering the same stats for those who want to focus entirely on PvP. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, this is stuff that we talked about before. I don't think I really thought about how it's for people who can't can't quest. I don't yeah. know. I never yeah. thought about it until they worded it, just it this way. It replaces 170 quest points worth of progress. 
Dang. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Barrow's Gloves typically, also with lower requirements, typically require 41 defense. But these new wristbands only require 20 defense. So Whoa. for people that are peers or semi-peers or just weird accounts, then this is going to be weirdos. <laughs> nice for you. Uh, you can also imbue it, giving you very slightly better offensive stats, but you will need 40 defense to equip these kinds. Okay. Also, the concept art for the upcoming gear looks really cool, and I'm oh. kind of jealous that it's untradeable and like pretty much PvP only. You will have to earn it. It looks really, really cool. So the oh, Centurion. Like cent- I was gonna say it looks like a. I was gonna say Centaurian. A I centaur. Don't know if- no, I know what I'm talking about. I was thinking of Rory from Doctor Who when he's dressed up like this. <laughs> That's so funny. But I thought it was Centaurian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Centurion's Karas. This is going to be the uh, Barbarian Assault Fighter Torso equivalent. And it looks, you look literally like if you've ever seen any like... Um, Roman soldiers. Like Roman soldiers. Yeah, that's very much what they're going for here. And I think it looks really cool. This looks cool, but the whole sets of gear that they're going to be coming up in just a second look really, really good. But yeah, this overall looks pretty nice with like leather shoulder pads and a bronze Karas chest piece. Add a ornament kit for the fighter's torso, you cowards. Oh, I know. That'd be really cool. <laughs> so this looks really cool. And again, it'll allow you to skip the barbarian assault grind and simply just buy yourself a fighter torso equivalent and be able to use that whenever you go. And you are going to need 40 defense to equip this. So you're not skating by with uh, being a peer on this one, but <laughs> you are going to get some pretty cool options. And then Yo. we have the actual sets that I was talking about called the Calamity Chest and Breaches. The most hardcore and balled out one is so cool. Yeah. So there are, this is the equivalent of the Void sets and oh, yeah. it does go up. There's three different versions for each Void set. So it does go up in requirements of defense and I think offense all the way up to, I believe, and 75. In style. And in style. <laughs> Because not only do you look kind of like you just barely know what you're doing on the lowest level set, whenever you get to the highest level set, you look like a god. pretty much like a war commander of some sort, or like a so like an old school like Roman war general. It looks like there's just like gold plating on it too. Some yeah, parts. It, sick. It looks kind of like a um, it's kind of like a take on the Bandos chess piece mm-hmm. yeah. because it has like the one arm fully engulfed in like armor plating. You know, the one shoulder is very trendy right now. Yeah, it's it's really, really iconic. <laughs> so overall, it's pretty cool. Like I said, there's three different sets requiring no requirements, 50 defense as well as 75 defense. Dope. So whatever um, PvP bracket you end up being in, there's options for everyone if you plan on using uh, void type gear. Cool. Yeah, so coming up, we have the Malma headgear set. So we were just talking about the armor set, which looks pretty cool, but there's different helmets for each one, just like how there's different helmets for the three different void sets. The first one is the Gladiator full helm carask with a plume, red plume above (laughs) it. And it does get cooler as it goes up, or at least in my opinion, all the way up to a full mask. You kind of look like Jason, but from Roman times. Yeah, that's why I like it. Yeah. So it looks pretty cool. And of course, there's three versions, and it's the melee version. And then we have the ranged version, which looks really cool as well. Yeah, I really like the aesthetic of all of the Roman gear. Yes. And then we have the Stop mage it. one. This the, is like some Marvel villain type thing. Yeah, the the mage one is essentially Doom from Marvel or Yo, from DC Comics. It looks like one of the villains from Korra, Legend of Korra. Uh, yeah. I can't remember the guy's which name. Which is also a ripoff of Doom. Mm, Doom uh, ripped off Korra. Oh, okay. I cool. heard that. Yeah, so she's talking about Amon from yeah. Korra. And, or if you've ever seen Doom from any of... I don't know, like Fantastic Four or something like that. And also um, uh, any of the, the in Skyrim, there's also this is also a really famous mask in Skyrim. There's like the Archmage uh, face oh, helmet. Yeah, it's like a whole face helmet with a hood on top. It's so cool. Yeah, very, very cool. So overall, I think they all look really good. And on top of that, they have a few different ways to um, get access to some very strong prayer abilities as well. So the first one is going to be called Humble Chivalry. So this gives you access to chivalry, but it's not quite as good. So the existing 60 prayer requirement does remain regardless of which prayer version you do unlock. But this just simply allows you to um, 
circumvent the required quests for it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, also with this beta, you'll automatically be unlocking the ability to use humble piety and humble chivalry if you, chivalry if you don't have the levels set for the normal piety and chivalry prayers. Cool. So the difference between the regular chivalry and the humble chivalry is going to be the defense. And that's true for piety as well. So normally it's going to require, uh, it says if you have completed the King's Ransom Night Waves and have 65 defense, chivalry acts as it currently does, giving you 20 defense, 18 strength, and 15 attack. If you have not completed the Night Waves or lack 65 defense, so this is for all you peers out there, <laughs> Chivalry will still give you 18 strength and 15 attack, but zero defense. So that's kind of a big difference. 20% defense bonus you are not going to be getting. And you are blocked from performing PvP attacks while the prayer is active. So this is strictly oh, PvP. Interesting. Yeah. And also for Humble Piety, it's essentially the same. It does grant you access to Humble Piety, which is really similar to how Normal Piety is. But again... It doesn't give you the defense. So normally piety does require um, knight's waves as well as 70 defense. Mm -hmm. But it gives you 25 defense, 23 strength, and 20% attack. If you have not completed the knight's wave but have at least 40 defense. So this isn't for peers, but this is for higher level accounts that simply just don't want to. <laughs> a little lazy. Yeah, maybe they don't have, maybe they just have 40 defense and are doing like a, a weird min-max setup with this. Yeah. Then you can do this with 40 defense, and you don't need to do the waves. You don't need to have 70 defense. It'll give you 23% strength and 20% attack, but again, no 25% defense. So you are missing out on quite a bit of uh, mitigation that way. But again, on can only be used in PvP. And yes, it'll only be useful in offensive situations. So that is pretty much all that was packed into this beta. Again, if you want to check any of this out, head over to your beta world. It's available to anyone that has membership. Head over there, check it out, test out all the new gears if you want, or simply just give the arena a go and see how that goes as well. Let us know what you think. Yeah, let us know what you think. As far as the poll 76 changes, as far as the poll There's 76. There's no way the dog is this loud in the background. I know. I did want to apologize again because while you were explaining, he was being like the loudest breather in the background. Oh, he just breathes loud. He's just standing there now. Yeah. As far as the poll 76 changes go, the first batch of changes have arrived. The Pharaoh Scepter is now one-handed. So shout out to that. And also the wounded Shazian soldiers are now a little bit more grateful if you heal them from death. <laughs> giving you twice as much favor as before from point 0.1 to point 0.2. Yeah, they kind of gave you, like, nothing. That yeah. was kind of wild. It I mean, was... they're still giving us nothing, but it's more. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what's nice is now the fires at the Barbarian Village and Rogue's Den can be left-clicked, which are two very Ooh. popular cooking spots. They removed some lines of dialogue from collecting slime and bone meal. <laughs> and the Fishing Guild shop now carries small nets, fishing rods, and more, which is a wonder why they didn't. Yeah, literally. A uh, fishing net can now be found on a table inside the fishing guild as well, which can be a big deal for some people, like maybe UIMs. Fishing guild's UIMs. the place to hang out now, everyone. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, as far as Shattered Relics, the closure, we have final rankings. So Good God. Dragon ranking with a massive 52,545 points for the final. Uh, rune is 31,980 Adamant, 15,575. Mithril, 5,475. <laughs> Steel, 1,660. And Iron, 480. So hopefully everyone got the rank they wanted. I know I definitely didn't. I know so. I didn't. <laughs> hopefully everyone else. Yeah. Uh, and they do have a little thing here saying, unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye to League's Three Shattered Relics. All League's worlds will close at the usual update time. Of course, it's so already closed. over. But again, you can go check out the rewards shop. Uh, your league points will transfer over to the main game, ready to be spent on any goodies you might want. But that's not all. We've also got a few trophies to hand out. And again, they that. should already be handed out. Yeah. So that's going to be nearly it. One final thing we wanted to pop in here with is that the Guardians of the Rift is going to be coming out in one week. Woo! 
So that's really cool. The associated quest Temple of the Eye will be out as well. You can look forward to a completely new way to train Runecraft in this non-combat team-based minigame that sees you protecting the Rift Guardian from the approaching forces of the Abyss. I can't wait. Yeah, pretty cool. We've already done podcasts on this, so go back and check those out if you are totally unaware of what we're talking about, but it is really cool. And they're also including access to the new True Blood Altar. So, so pretty things. neat, pretty exciting. They also have some really cool stuff in the Very cool merch. merch store. So if you are keen on picking up a new shirt or a jacket, <laughs> check those out. All right, so it looks like that's about it for this week's update, though. We can go over and end with our usual Q&A, though. Ooh, our Q&A or their Q&A first? We'll do, their, or we'll do ours, and then we'll cherry pick a few of the questions from the Q&A. Okay. All right, so... From ours, we're going to start out with one from Matt. Shout out, Matt. Shout out, Matt, who asked, where would be the best shop to work at in Gilinor? Oh. So he said that he would choose Aubrey's Rune Shop in Vera because a lot of noobs shop there. Noobs are usually nicer than veteran players because they aren't worn down by the grind yet, which is fair. Also, he generally loves magic and would find it fun to work with magicians all the time. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I put some deep thought into this. I didn't hear this question until just now. So I just realized ahead. I never told you. Um, the pet store in Ardoin, because I'd get to see all the little pets in person. The pet store in Ardoin. Yeah, and I'm assuming to ensure them, I would have to like hug them a little bit first. You'd have to hug and I'd pet have to them hug a little them bit. And pet them and like maybe take one home. If they could ensure, I'd be like, okay, this is my pet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I would. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That just sounds like the most fun. Just petting a bunch of cute little animals. Okay. I'm assuming that they'd all let me pet them. Little right. baby jabs and stuff. Yeah, that seems pretty cool. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, I don't know, because I was going through like all of them. I was like, oh, I feel like a pretty good one would be just like, I don't know, like the regular clothes store in Varrock or something. That'd be cool. You can see all kinds of people. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I was thinking it would be the most funny for me. As like a NPC with like a low key boring life, to work <laughs> at the the bandit camp in the wilderness. Oh my gosh! Because I'll just be like, oh yeah, sure, I'll I'll buy your five hundred uh, mithril plate bodies. Oh, there's someone behind you. You're dead. You're dead. <laughs> Goodbye. You're dead. Oh, those are now your mithril plate bodies. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. And then they're coming at you, and you're like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> excuse me, I'm a NPC. So let me get my manager. <laughs> Did you want to sell something? It's like, oh, you want to sell 500 mithril plate bodies Oh, now. sorry. I misunderstood. Sorry, I thought it was the other guy that just died. It was you, though. He was never here. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one, actually. That's funny. Yeah, I don't know. I think I thought that'd be funny because it would just be like... Very entertaining. Like random shenanigans, way. I guess, as like a boring NPC life goes. It'd probably be pretty exciting. We chose such different answers. I was like, I want to pet all the animals at the insurance store. You're like, I want to watch people die in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was like, I was, I was thinking about... All the ones that I could think of, and I was like, I so guess funny. that's probably the coolest one. If if not, I'd probably choose maybe someone in the gnome area or maybe in Priftonus. I was gonna say if not, I choose somewhere in Priftonus just because it looks dope and I'd want to be there. Yeah, or maybe I'll just choose someone like in Piscarilius because then I could just kind of like go fishing or something. I don't oh, know. Just vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we also have one more question from Cool Nate who asked, if you were to pick one RuneScape scale to use in real life, which would it be? Which Robert already responded saying Dungeoneering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, what's the most useless one I could think Dungeoneering. of? Dungeoneering. I was yeah. trying to think and I was like, what's cool but not like too basic? And I was like, Slayer? And I was like, in what what context would I need Slayer in real yeah. life? I would choose magic. Duh, I want to teleport everywhere. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty OP. And we're broke. Can you imagine if we could just go to the store and be like, hi Elk, hi Elk, hi Elk. We'd be thieves, but it's fine. Yeah, what are you talking about? And then we teleport about? out of there. We could just like, why Why would you have to result to thievery, not taking the thieving one? <laughs> but also, uh, why wouldn't you just like be like, oh, I'll teleport you to, teleport. I'll teleport you to anywhere. True. Just give me money. Okay, never mind. I would, I would just, I already was just using magic anyway, but I'm not <laughs> using it for nefarious means anymore. Sure. Apparently everyone <laughs> just heard you're a thief. Yeah, if I ever rob a bank, everyone's going to be like, we saw this one coming. <laughs> yeah. I actually forgot which which skills. Bring up the skills real quick, so I yes. need to see what they are. Farming. Um, oh, wait, actually, I was joking, but farming would be nice because my plants always die. 
Farming would be really cool, actually. I think farming <laughs> would be really nice. I think... Because we are vegan, so we could just feed ourselves. Hunting would be kind of cool. Um, we don't hunt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Construction would be cool because that's essentially just a, like a real-life carpenter. Yeah, you could build us a house. Yeah. Also, I, I'm like assuming for some reason that it would like work the same way. So there would just be like a couple planks and I will just... <laughs> use my construction skill to then suddenly have a wall built or something like oh, that's that that's what i was imagining i was imagining me well whenever i was being nefarious at the store just being like Zoom, and then there's a pile of gold and i'm just like put it in my bag yeah i'd probably <laughs> pick something really basic like either crafting or construction or like i don't know even cooking and just like use it to cooking. enhance my already there abilities to make me like a god carpenter or like like a master whittler or a crafter or something. The number one Etsy shop in the world with that 99 crafting. Yeah, exactly. They'll be like, oh, we have 500 orders of like something. I'm like, oh, that'll take an hour. Let me hold down the space bar. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be like, <laughs> just walk up to my, walk up to my bank, just slightly bend over, take it out of the furnace, put it in the furnace, take it out. I'm like, all right, that'll Done. be $500. <laughs> yeah, That's I don't know. That's a good one. Probably something like that. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just assuming it just like is the same exact, but like in real life. Yeah, I mean, he didn't say any different, so. Yeah, so I'd probably choose, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably choose one of those three, I guess. Those are good ones. And I could always teleport us to wherever we need to be to help oh, you. Oh, true. Also, I just realized that there's no group teleporting, so I don't even know how Teleport others work. a thing. Oh yeah, true, 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 true. I teleport you first, and then I'm like, all right. Would you get access to all the all the spell books in this case? Yes, because oh, we're making up our own rules. You'd be an arc mage of sorts. Yeah, I mean, I'd mostly just want us to tell. I wouldn't want to kill anyone. Yeah, of course. Oh, Are you just gonna start barraging people? No, thieving their bodies. I was or literally something? thinking, Hiking if you did bodies? construction, I could teleport us to like cool places all over the world. And be like, Robert, build us a house. And we just have houses everywhere. <laughs> Um, so we can end off with just a few questions that I thought were really good questions from this week's Q and a from the mods. Okay. And you can find this full thing over on, I think on their YouTube, definitely on their Twitch, but they have this first question here. It was directed at mod Bruno, but honestly, I think mod Kieran answered it really well. And, um, they're asking about allocating resources to making a new early slash mid game bosses and bosses that require use of magic. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, it says potentially reusing and adapting existing boss fights. I think that'd be really cool. Mon Kieran even says that they think that there's a big gaping gap for something that could be added here. Not a big gap, a big gaping gap. I mean, that's what they said. <laughs> um, it's clearly a missing part of the game. And we've said this in the past. Yeah. That we think that there is way too few bosses before... Like, I don't know, big bosses. 70 or 80 combat, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, easily a few dozen, if not over 100 hours into the game. Yeah, it sucks because the easiest one's like Giant Mole, but what are you going to do? Not use the Falador Shield? Yeah, exactly. Like Giant Mole still be hard or mid -level. like, I, I think maybe Barrows would be easier, but then you you need some prayer. Compared and... to like the Briofita and Obor, though, they're hard. Yeah, compare, like going from Obor and Briofita. Which to, we the, should definitely... to the next level is just like, or like Seracnus is like. So you're skipping like 30 steps. Yeah, that's, that's a big difference. Because if we think back to it, the first time I ever went to Briofita, I died. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> and she poisoned me and I teleported out and I fell to my knees right after teleporting to Vera. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, they even go on to say that um, uh, they spoke about this a little in the past. Obviously, giants are a prime sort of direction. Uh, you could go with, but in general, there's not many mid game bosses. And to be fair, we've got Seracnus slightly earlier than some of the other stuff that we've got. I don't even consider Seracnus to be that early game. Yeah. Sometimes she also, hits hard, dude. Yeah. And also, the, I mean, it's, I'm not saying that the drops need to be immaculate, obviously, especially for early game bosses, but mm -hmm. the drops from um, like Obor, Briofita, Seracnus. Um, and even Barrows, to some extent, are really lackluster. I mean, Barrows obviously has some of the really good gear that'll like bring you up to the next tier. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, just not really... Compared to other stuff, it's not as good. Yeah, even if the drops aren't really good, the money isn't there either. So it's kind of like a double whammy of like... I was like... going to say, and like for Obor and Briofita, there's no pet chance. And you can't go any time. You yeah, have to go yeah. and like, get keys. Yeah, having to get the keys is a really big bummer. So I think we've said stuff about this previously, not just early game bosses, but free to play bosses as well. Obviously, you only have the 
the two options in free to play. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. But on top of that, they say that um, still the problem is that the stuff's tradable. It gets farmed by high level players. And we saw a lot of that feedback when we released it. Make it non-tradable. Uh, yeah, potentially. <laughs> I mean, it could be a huge boost to the account. If there was a little Brio Fita boss, everyone would want that. A little Obor walking around with his little thing, <laughs> his little weapon. Everyone would want that. Yeah. I think that could potentially be a good solve for something like this. And I, I don't really see too many downsides of it. If, mm-hmm. like, for example, there was a new uh fire giant boss or something that would like be that. Great. Because they, they reference that in um in Bruno's um, response talking about a fire giant boss it because they already have the nice moss giant. giant they already have the moss giant and the hill giant All the so if you had something like that and then maybe like a obviously not a d sim because the d sim has quite a bit of a requirement leading up to it mm-hmm. but maybe like a like a rune sim or maybe like a variant of it maybe a piece of armor it doesn't need to be a, a weapon per se but just as an example you had like because it's a fire boss, like a flaming D sim mm. or a, a flaming rune sim. Rather. That'd look so cool. Because one, that would be unique. You'd want to probably go for it. I mean, obviously, I'd go for it. If it's in between rune and D sim, you might not want to stay there and grind for a while. But if it was like a piece of armor, like because early on, it's really hard to get any good rings. For example, yes. Or I mean, your best necklace is a glory, which is pretty decent. But there's practically if you're iron though. That's hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you maybe you have like one of these niche slots, maybe boots, because you can't get dragon boots until, I mean, you have a good enough slayer to do um, mages in the oh, God, War Dungeon God Wars Law. mages, which are yeah. like 80 something. I can't even do that on my main. Some stuff that like I now consider basic is actually really hard to get if I think about it. Yeah, so I think maybe if you like put a piece of gear in a niche spot that it's still worthwhile to farm but is untradeable, they'll still have all their normal tradable drops like potions and random like rune or adamant pieces here and there. And Mm -hmm. you'll still only make like three to 400K while you're there, which will, you know, cover your supplies and stuff like that and maybe give you some good drops as an Ironman. But you'll have a a few chase items that are untradeable and really just bolster your account going into actual bossing. I think that could maybe be pretty cool. I'd love that. Yeah, I don't know. That's just the thought that I Are randomly had. Are you listening, Jagex? Uh, either way, Mod Karen goes on and finishes by saying, if you think that your journey as a player from the start to the later game, there's a huge gulf from the point when you get your D-SIM and your rune set, or maybe your D-Med or that kind of gear. The next upgrades are so far away in terms of your progression. Oh, yes. That either the money you've got to get or even worse on an Ironman in terms of earning it, so I'd love to add some middle game untradeable gear that's attached to these kinds of bosses. That means we can have it at a reasonable drop rate and it's something to earn. We don't have too much in the game, so it's a topic in and of itself, untradeable equipment, but most of the tradable equipment doesn't come from encounters. It comes from mini games. I would love that. I'd love, I mean, I want early and mid game, honestly. Yeah, I think that'd be I'm ideal. like, I don't think we need to prioritize like one over the other. Let's do both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because like right now you could do Obor pretty easily around like 40 or 50 combat. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, Bria Fida is probably pretty close to the same. Yeah, I don't remember what I was at when I died. <laughs> but I think if you were able to fit one, two, maybe maybe even three bosses in between 40 and 70, I think that's pretty reasonable. That's still a lot That'd of space insane, yeah. in between bosses. You and they can stuff to do. easily like be like, oh, cool. I got to 50. Not only does that mean that I can wear um, like obviously all the rune gear and maybe any dragon gear I might have picked up or or bought or whatever. But also until I get to 65 to buy obsidian or whatever you've got going on, maybe you can farm a piece of gear that's for level 50 but maybe in between are pretty close to a dragon piece that'll like kind of boost up your other stats that are that are lacking because like i said obviously boots um necklaces gloves necklaces rings, rings off hands and everything your, your, everything. Ammo, your ammo slot <laughs> all those are really lacking early on definitely so yeah maybe that'd be really cool and it would just be good boss experience because uh whenever i first started trying to boss i was like whoa i feel like i know absolutely nothing in the world yeah exactly it'd be a nice little introduction (laughs) instead of 
you know. We only have Brio Feet and Obor, but I didn't want to grind out to get the keys, so I didn't have practice. Yeah. And this final question I thought was pretty interesting, although I think I kind of see where it's going anyways, but I just thought I'd bring it up anyways. Uh, it says, could we see an update on skill cape utility? Hmm. I'm specifically thinking of agility cape perks, but I'm sure there's other capes that have near useless skills as well. I don't even know what most of them do, but I have heard some complaints. <laughs> yeah. And Mod Kieran even says it's been a long time since we've done them. <laughs> but uh, Mod Bruno says that they see this topic come up quite a lot and they do agree that it would be nice for every skill cape to have a somewhat useful or good use. But at the same time, this is the first thing I thought of. So I'm really glad Bruno brought it up. But it's at the same time, it also buffs the max cape. Because obviously the max cape has the same benefits of all 23 skills combined. Mm -hmm. So if you buff up every, like, let's say half of them are useful, the other half aren't. That means potentially the max cape is going to be very strong if it's getting kind of more or less 13 times stronger. Well, it could be things just like a teleport that's relevant. Yeah, yeah. no, for sure. And they even say here, he even says here that... Um, you can consider nerfing the max cape a little bit, right. uh, something along the lines of making you choose between a certain amount of the skill cape buffs instead of having all 23 at the same time. Be interesting. Um, they said maybe five, which to be fair, most people only really use two or three at the same time. <laughs> so it's kind of yeah. be like with the uh, leagues, how you could just pick and choose from five slots. Uh, yeah, maybe. I could see that. Or maybe, yeah, just add like some buffs that are just not really significant, but just give you a little bit of help because i don't think it's like necessarily fair to be like well we're not going to ever change the skill capes because we don't want max capes to be a thing y yeah because most people don't ever max true because <laughs> i mean if you look at it oh, my strength's 97 oh congrats Thanks. but yeah if you i mean that's a really good point if you bring it up if you look at it agility skill cape is pretty useless um i mean while max is a graceful right yeah and if you look at like the herb lore cape, it's nice to have, but by the time you get it, it's pretty useless. It yeah. just allows you to use or grimy herbs to make potions and stuff like that. Oh, I didn't even know. I don't know what most of the capes do. I know I actually do use the farming cape sometimes to teleport me. Yeah. And I use the hit points one for Zolcano to yeah, get Yeah, exactly. Extra hit point, the hit points one. So like if That's you look at the, the, the good ones, I mean, hit points cape. Uh, the construction cape, which is obviously one of the best ones. Mm -hmm. Crafting, which is obviously one of the best ones. Or cooking, which is still good even after 99. And um, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. But if you look at like the fishing cape, it's like, uh, I mean, it's cool that you have it, but you're never going to wear it. Yeah, it's not that cool. Yeah. So it would be nice to see a little like boost on each of those. I mean, even like capes like that are pretty iconic, like the strength cape and stuff like that are... I mean, more or less useless. I don't even know what the strength cape does. It really doesn't do much. Um, most of the combat ones really don't do a ton. Yeah. But um, yeah, if they maybe did boost them to be better or like he said, maybe just have it so they're all good to some extent, but like niche in their own way. And maybe yeah. you can pick five depending on what you plan on doing. Kind of like how you set up your inventory depending on what you're doing. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. I mean, either way, I'm not Max. Let us know what you think about these random yeah, questions that we brought up. <laughs> but uh, I think that's going to be about it for this episode. I hope everyone enjoyed it. But uh, if you want to hear more from us or join us next week, where can they find us, Michelle? Oh, yeah, you can find us on Twitter at BoomBabeOSRS, our YouTube podcast, obviously, and our Instagram are all just BoomBabe. And I stream at twitch.tv slash BoomBabe five days a week. Yep. So come hang out. <laughs> yeah, so do you have anything coming up this week? Trying to get to Skatizo. Sorry, I got so excited. Trying to get to Skatizo, and actually, I said I was on Abyssal Slayer task. Yeah. Uh, I just got two superiors within the last 20, so now I have two totem pieces, and I'm like, give me a third in the last, like, I think I have eight left. Maybe <laughs> nice. it will. So now I'm, like, re-hopeful about Skatizo. I went into this episode. Re-hopeful. Well, I've kind of... I'm using reverse psychology. Instead of naming my stream like Dark Claw Incoming, I'm like, oh, I don't even want a Dark Claw anymore. I don't like, even like wink, it. Wink, wink. I actually hate the Dark Claw. <laughs> but yeah, whenever I started today's episode, like I didn't have any totem pieces. So I was like, oh God. But now I have two. So that's nice. nice. I'm, I just need one more piece and then I'll be able to go to Skatiza tonight on stream. Maybe get the Dark Claw that I don't want. Maybe get the pet that I also don't want. That's cool. Maybe. <laughs> what about, what are you going to say? Uh, I'm going to do more bossing. So more Vorkath and I'm going to play some more games with my friends. So hopefully we'll see how that goes. Maybe put out some videos for that. Um, 
really hoping i think i said this last week as well but uh i'm just gonna keep saying it until it gets done but really hoping Rune to content. get some uh yeah osrs <laughs> videos out pretty soon am i psychic <laughs> yeah Hopefully that happens, but um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I hope it will. I mean, the forecast, he's basically got most of it recorded, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, you can I really just do, do the audio. No, that one would be really easy. But um, I think that's going to be about it. Yeah. Thank you all for listening. Yeah. Thanks for coming by this week. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, make sure to hit us up over on any of those socials we talked about just recently. And also our Discord has a questions section. Feel free to hit us up on any of those and we get to it next week as well. Yep. So thanks for listening. Hopefully you guys have a great week and we'll see you all next Very time. Very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> 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 <laughs>